Hey golfers and welcome back to another episode of the Second Swing Thoughts podcast and today is going to be a really fun one because we have Mr. Kevin Kraft in the studio today from the Columbia store. Um, we've been filming some videos over the last couple of days now and uh, we have some fun stuff coming to the YouTube channel so make sure to check that out. But yes. um, Kevin, first of all, uh, thanks for flying in to help out with the content and the, the channel and everything. Thanks for bringing me up at a time where, you know, I didn't hate the air that hit my face the second I walked <laughs> off the air, out of the airport. That was, um, it actually goodness. could not have been worse weather when you got here. No, the first no, time. no. Every every time I've been up here, it's been absolutely miserable. I, I'm shocked to see that this is actually what you guys live in. Yeah, it's, I, it's, it's this nice. is what you live it for, can, right? It can this get is nice out in the summer here, yeah. yeah, it's great. Yeah, so. Um, the clock's ticking, though, you know? Yeah, I mean, well, it's, you know, give it a couple months and it'll snow again. So, <laughs> um, but uh, how have things been? I know it's been, uh, we've kind of, le you know, since we've, been together it's yeah. been the, the busy golf season has sort of come and gone so yeah um my season's gotten weird <laughs> yeah <laughs> um got off to an okay ish start and then just kind of fizzled yeah like i just i haven't been particularly sharp um mm. so you know the results haven't been exactly what i'm what i was looking yeah. for but um things will pick up for me a little bit starting in august Okay. I'm um, about to add a second event in August to my schedule. Okay. Um, there's a new senior tour called the Senior Players Tour that uh, they just announced their second event last night. Oh, there you go. And it's in Western New York. So that oh, one's yeah. a pretty easy reach for me. So um, info on this thing is a little little light, a little sus. A little limited little, at this yeah, point. Yeah, I just don't really know that much about it. Um, so we'll see. I'm going to pay and play and see what happens. Yeah. 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 So that's going to be one of my bigger events for the year, honestly. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that was a, that's a new addition to nice. things. And nice. Makes my, my August a little bit more interesting. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's good. And, uh, I think we should, you know, I, I know kind of off air, we were talking a little bit about sort of the current, you know, major tour golf landscape and, yeah. Uh, specifically the U.S. Women's Open going on right now at Pebble yep. Beach. And I know you had mentioned, like, it's kind of cool to see how these women's ev events are sort of now being played at these sort of A-list courses now where, yes. you know, it seems like that is gaining a little bit more momentum there, where these kind of A-list courses are hosting large events more with more regularity in the women's game. Yeah, it's great, and and seeing them playing at, at Pebble Beach this week is is fantastic. I mean, nothing's nothing in in, in American golf is really more iconic right. than than Pebble Beach. Um, so it's really good to see the the women getting to play the kinds of courses that the men have just become, you know, mm -hmm. accustomed to. They probably take that a little bit for granted because they've been doing it for so long. Yeah. Um, the women's game is absolutely phenomenal. I, I, <laughs> you want to watch good golf swings, man? I tell you what, you watch. Oh, yeah. Watch the women's tour because the, they're technically so fun, just so sound. It's uh, it's an absolute pleasure mm -hmm. to watch those those golf swings. I stayed up till eleven o'clock last night watching the coverage. They yeah, were yeah. On, They were on all nights so practically. So. And I, I think maybe the biggest fallacy among, you know, amateur golfers is that the, the scratch male player can yeah. go out on the LPGA tour and compete. Yeah. Uh, uh, nah, no, you're going to get, you're going to get, you're going to get dusted. If you do yeah. That. You yeah. Got, got no chance. Yeah. No <laughs> chance. Um, those, yeah. You're like you said, there's those swings are so re repeatable, so yeah. consistent short yeah. games, phenomenal. Yep. Um, I think I remember, was it Yanni saying when she was in her kind of in her prime taking over the, the golf game, I think she was probably the best putter that's ever lived. Mm. Um, 15 feet and then make was make rate was un yeah. unbelievable. So, um, so anyway, that it's, it's fun to see that. And, and there's always already some big names up on the leaderboard. And then the, the, the women's PGA a couple weeks ago was also a very fun event and yeah. fun finish. So, um, yeah, just a lot of momentum there. And I think you mentioned too, like there's, it seems like every week on mail or on the, you know, PGA tour, LPGA tour, there's like new names that are just, yeah. there's talent everywhere. Um, there's you, so there's much a new talent. 19, 20, 21 year old that emerges and is suddenly ripping it up on the highest level. Yeah, I mean, the women's tour is getting another little boost right now with, yeah. with Rose Zhang coming mm -hmm. out and, and starting her professional career. Um, 
you know, I think the timing was right for her. Yeah. Uh, she pretty much won everything she needed to yeah, win. Yeah. You know, I what mean, else can you what, add what, to your exactly, resume what, as what an amateur player? Do there? So, <laughs> uh, and obviously, you know, she won her first event. Yeah. Uh, contended at the at mm-hmm. the PGA. And now she's she, a little bit of a struggle yesterday. Um, right. Golf course is not playing particularly easy. So, uh, golf is hard, and and they're going to yeah. get a good test of it. And I think it's. Sounds like the weather's going to get uh, a little. It's going to get a little windier. Maybe Pebble's going to kind of rear its. its Which, its in head a way, I kind of think benefits her, and she can kind of climb back in. Maybe, um, you know, that seems. It seems like kind of where really talented, skilled players can sort of get that leg up is when it gets really tough. Yeah. Um, especially someone like her who just wins all the time. Yeah. Apparently, her sixty-three in the event that they played out there. I think it was a college event, I guess. Um, happened in fairly windy conditions yeah, so, so um i'm, I'm anxiously yeah. awaiting what, yeah, what we'll she's see. gonna do over the course yeah. of of you know the next few seasons yeah but well we'll see when this is maybe we'll sound like geniuses when this is released and rosang has actually won the u.s women's <laughs> open you know could, could uh, happen i mean she's my pick yeah so, yeah you know. oh i i mean that's not a that's a very smart pick i think so yeah um speaking of picks the open championship now on the men's side is coming up uh do you have any inklings on maybe a rooting for and b who you think would win? Um, so it's it's so hard to pick winners. It's so hard. We to just pick mentioned winners. about all the talent out there. Yeah, I mean, look, Wyndham Clark was, is is a great player. Yeah, right. And coming off of a win, and you know, getting into into a major, getting into contention, and all of a sudden, there's there's that confidence level yep. that that he needed to get over over the edge. And what he did on on Sunday at at, at, uh, at LA Country Club was was amazing. Mm-hmm. Like he was just super steady, and uh, so I I don't know. I mean, yeah. you, you you look at you look down the list and you think there's so many good players. Um, you know, personally, I would love to see Ricky Fowler do it. Yeah, uh, just his story is awesome. Mm-hmm. Seeing somebody that is kind of fallen off sunk to some pretty nasty depths and then is is coming back up and it's just a it's a great story of redemption for him and getting the finally getting the win it really felt like it was coming yeah he's been playing some great golf uh he still has kind of that moniker of the 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 player that's done a lot but yet has one major major, right so um yeah why not now yeah right yeah that was really really fun to watch him kind of this whole year he's been playing awesome golf yeah and you sort of knew that that win was coming just the way he was playing he's contending yeah. right there obviously the u.s open was sort of in his the palm of his hand for a long time yeah for yeah, basically three days sl- slipped away a little um, bit there but Putter left you know him, but. not quite the same taste of victory probably at the rocket mortgage but yeah. still a very cool to see him back yeah. and well Cool thing there. I mean, he's sponsored by Rocket yeah, Mortgage, true. so so that's that's the folks at Rocket Mortgage up in the oh, corporate office are pretty they're, excited. They're, about they're that loving one. that. Yeah, that's yeah, there's a, a couple more commercial shoots for Ricky Fowler after that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we got to talk a little bit now, now about what we have been doing the last couple of days. Yeah, the um, good stuff. Specifically, um, now we did some title stuff. We can't talk a ton about right now. Okay, but. The Pinga G430 LST we can talk about. Okay. The TaylorMade Mini or Burner Mini driver we can talk about. Yeah. So it, it, we did the What's in the Bag as well we filmed. Yeah. And we talked a little bit about the three wood potentially leaving, being on notice, I think was the term you said. On notice is so correct, yeah. Give, like, give the listeners here a little bit of where you're at with the Paradigm Triple Diamond and then how the the G430 LST and the burner mini driver performed yesterday and you know why you might be making the switch. So there's going to have to be some testing yeah. done, you know, some head to head stuff to see yeah. whether there's with, a, you know, op- my shaft there. and, and the golf yeah, ball. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Um, you know, the, with the testing that we did yesterday, the LST had a, a shaft that I would probably use. Yeah. Um, the, the burner didn't, we just went with the stock mm-hmm. shaft and that one just never quite, I never quite knew where that, club yeah. head was there so um where i'm at with the three wood i'm actually really happy with my triple diamond um i added some weight to the bottom of the sole just to get just bring that weight up a little bit uh, i felt like it was lacking a little bit of pop and i didn't know why because that club is just geared for distance mm. um you know that the 
weight forward and and the loft and everything i've got the 13 5 head um it just it's set up there to just be bombed and it just wasn't going and i was just like what's going on so i weighed it mm -hmm. it was a little light so I threw some weight in there and all of a sudden boom you know i was like oh okay there it is that's yeah, yeah. that's what i was looking for um so i'm not chomping at the bit to make a change there yeah but if something's good enough i'm a club fitter I love new equipment. I'm as much of a, a equipment hound as anybody. Yeah. So I'm gonna get in there and I'm gonna pick these things apart with a fine tooth comb and see what's see what's potentially gonna give me something better than what I've got now. Right. Um, yeah. Because I I mean, having watched you hit the shots yesterday, both clubs performed really well. I mean, you're they did. You were getting the distance that you wanted. Yes. Know, the numbers that you kind of mentioned early on. Yeah. And, in, in, in some cases, with a range numbers. ball. Yeah, with a range ball. Yeah. So, um, I think one, the G430 LST is all it's hyped up to be. I think. I mean, there's a lot of pop there. A lot of pop and a uh, lot of forgiveness. That thing felt so stable. Yeah. Uh, just it. It felt easy. It felt really, mm -hmm. really easy, both off the tee yeah. and off the and deck. It's, I think I actually I kind of respect Ping for making sure they get things. They've done this before with. Yes. You know releasing a series of woods, right? Or maybe it's a series of uh, products or whatever it is. But if there's one that's not quite ready, mm -hmm. they do, they have no problem waiting and yeah. not just rushing it out there. And they've done it before. They did it with the G430 LST Fairywood, mm -hmm. and I think it's paid off for them. So I, that's I really cool. definitely think so, yeah. And then the also the, the Burner Mini. Uh, you've mentioned in the past, TaylorMade's <laughs> models have not been quite up, you know, quite enough i guess to make you think about putting them in the bag but this one certainly has it's, yeah the, the mini driver is really something that has always been very specific right yeah for a particular individual i fit that category so why wouldn't have i ever done it they just have i don't know they just they haven't been inspired this new one's inspired like yeah everything about it is is just the fit the finish the look the sound the feel everything about it is really really good mm -hmm. um the new sole on the bottom the case uh, hole. Yeah, it makes it pretty easy to hit off the deck, even though, you know, it's it's, it's yeah. not a tiny head. No. You know, it's not the size of a regular three wood. So, but no problem getting that thing off the, off the deck. I don't hit three wood off the deck that much. I just want to know that I can if I need to. Right. Um, that driver replacement mm -hmm. thing is the, the most important for me. And if it does produce more distance, I will take that. Right. If, if I'm... If I'm hitting a three wood because I feel like I can't mentally hit a driver on a hole, uh, unless there's a creek or something or you know a yeah. pond that I, I can't go further, I still want the club that's going to go as far as possible, right? So right now I give up 20, 25 yards off the tee when I have to hit three wood, uh, but I can hit it, right? And yeah. that's 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 the key thing is actually being able to hit something off the tee, and uh, so if I get if I can get more out of it. I'm going to take more. Yeah, and yeah. you were certainly getting some distance out of that. There was Burner Mini yesterday. The carry numbers and, and total numbers were very yeah. solid. Yeah. So um, stay tuned to the YouTube channel um, for these testing sessions that we yeah. were, are referring to. There was some good stuff that was accomplished, I think. So, yeah. um, And I think you'll see the the reasons why we're so excited about, about those clubs. So mm -hmm. um, the other club, and kind of, again, staying in your bag in a way, is... On the putter side, this jailbird craze going on right now. Yeah, yeah. So uh, for those um, unaware and are listening or watching, the Odyssey Jailbird Versa putter is kind of taking the golf world by storm recently. It started when Wyndham Clark won the Wells Fargo yep. back in early May, and then you know five weeks later wins the U.S. Open, and then the very next week Keegan Bradley wins the Travelers Championship, yep. and then the very next week after that. Ricky Fowler wins the Rocket Mortgage Classic, all and they're all the using putter. the Odyssey Jailbird versus Putter. Yeah, um, I've never really seen anything like it, and mm -hmm. you know, you, then you go on eBay and you see Jailbird versus for Thousand four dollars. figures. Oh yeah. Um, I know now Odyssey's going to do a limited run of that exact build. They are out now. You can yep. order those. Yep. Um, I've I've never seen anything like it. A single putter having that big a impact across multiple players no yeah you know there was one putter that just won everything but it was attached to a 
particular player. Mm. Um, yeah, I guess Tiger's putter. Tiger's probably, putter man. probably won quite a bit. <laughs> they won everything. Yeah. They won everything. Yeah. Uh, there's. I don't think there's ever been a putter that was used under extreme pressures. Yeah. That performed the way that putter did. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's still attached to the individual, right? The it, greatest, it, the greatest yeah. player of all time. Yeah. So um, arguably, that putter could be the greatest <laughs> putter ever. That's true. You know, but maybe the Versa Jailbird is is, you know, it's it's, it's, it's it, it is be, true be though, like contender. because we've seen before, guys. I mean, Tiger is, a, is sort of the exception of the exception, right? But yeah. there's guys, Ram and Scheffler recently, you know, have gone on these stretches of winning. Two or three starts in a row, where yeah. maybe it's like I think Scheffler's on a streak right now of like twenty straight top twenties or something like that. I think it's top fourteens. Yeah, or something yeah, ridiculous. I mean, it, it is right? ridiculous. Yes, um, absolutely. But and they, they obviously they when they're doing this, they're not changing their equipment most of the time. Right. But to see three different guys go through this and win with the same putter, and it's it's a model that's, I mean, nobody really ever thought of it until recently. It was a, it's nine years old. Yeah. Uh, the the verse the the verse align from Odyssey. I mean, there's models out there. We get them. We see them traded in all the time. Oh, yeah. the Second swing. Yeah. You know, we see them around, but it's not yeah. like everybody's, you know, sprinting through the door asking for Versa putters. Right. No. Uh, at least until recently. Until now. Yeah. So, uh, and I now to kind of bring it back to your bag. I know there's a. That's not the Versa series, no. but a Jailbird head yeah. is now in your bag at least for a testing. Uh, portion of time here. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna put it through the paces. Yeah, um, it's a completely different build than I've ever done for a putter. Um, I mean, I've messed around with length, and now I've got I built one. It's the the OG Bird. Yeah, which was current model line. Um, same basic shape. The 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 window's not quite as big in the back. Uh, the big thing for me though is the the lines on mm-hmm. it. So two lines and then a line on the top. I have some really strange issues. And one of my issues is that I hate three dots on the top line. You can put a dot, cool. But you put three dots and I'm supposed to imagine that that's a line, I I don't know. Too much work, I I don't know what it is. I have, I've got issues. We we, we all know that I've got issues. They're documented. They are documented. So (laughs) that happens to be one of my aesthetic things is I don't like that. So the OG bird hopefully will give me the same kind of, you know, bump in in putting performance. Who knows? I've got a big 17 inch jumbo max putter grip on it. I've never used one of those either. Yeah. So uh, I'm just going, I'm, I'm off in uncharted territory here. And uh, we're we're gonna see if it works. Yeah, I mean, I'm excited to see if it works too because yeah. maybe there is something to just this j- this bird jailbird head shape that is what's working. Um, maybe so. I it, it, I can't imagine why that is. Yeah. I mean, why didn't it work back when it was first released? Mm-hmm. Or did it work when it was first released and it nobody just, nobody really noticed? Yeah, and nobody I mean, paid attention. And, it and certainly all the biggest names in golf were yeah. already on their contracts. And yeah, whatever, it you know? certainly didn't have the final two guys, right. the final pairing at the U.S. Open using it right. back in the day. Because that so. is actually the, the the cool part about it is that none of the three players are Odyssey or Callaway contracted. No, no, that's players. Yeah. right? so they they are going out and choosing to build this putter yeah. themselves off yeah. of their brand contract, right? Yep. Wyndham Clark's a Titleist guy. Keegan Bradley's a Shrixon uh, staffer. And then you have Ricky Fowler on Cobra, Cobra Puma. Yeah. So, and they're they're finding a putter that, I know, it's, it's crazy. I've never seen it um, happen yeah. like this. I don't know if it's going to continue. It's cool. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting to see. I'm following yeah. it yeah. and I'm fascinated by it. So, yeah. um, what was, we have, what, was, what was Jonas Blix putting with yesterday? I don't know. I, I don't either. I yeah. didn't look. I should have looked. <laughs> if it was that, I, I might drop everything and go get one. Um, so, lastly, before a couple of Q&A yeah. uh, or questions from YouTube viewers, um, we talked a little bit about it, but sort of what's coming up with your, well, your game, how you're playing, how you feel about it, um, and maybe some events upcoming that you wanted to highlight and yeah. people look forward to. Um, I'm trending in the right direction, I think. Um, I've kind of made a comprehensive change in the bag, uh, changed up irons a little bit, tried to get something that's maybe got a, a touch more offset to it um, and 
it hits a couple other points, a little more spin, a little more trajectory, a uh, little smaller heads. Maybe that's something to just dial in my yeah. my focus. Uh, Aim small, miss small. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I just felt like I, I needed some sort of something to get me over this bit of a funk. Right? Sure. I didn't put up very good scores over the last few weeks, and I'm going to be the consummate professionalist. Blame the equipment. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't like to think that it's me. I know it's me, but um, for whatever reason, things just weren't playing out the way I wanted to play out. And yeah, well, I had this equipment laying around, and I hadn't really, hadn't really done anything with it. So I thought, ah, well, let's let's throw it in, and and you know, after a run of bad scores, I actually put up a pretty decent number. It was only one under par, but it was at a golf course that I don't think I've ever shot lower than 75 on. It was like yeah. the worst place for me to go to try to break out of a funk, right? And you kind of did. Yeah. And, and I did. So Maybe that's um, signs of things to come, hopefully. Yeah, let's hope so. I mean, the first round was 14 greens in regulation and three fringes. So I had putter in my hands 17 times in 18 holes. Uh, that's, that's, that's the kind of ball striking that makes me really happy. Um, The fact that I only made two putts during that time for birdies is a little frustrating, but you know, I'm a, I'm a good 50% putter right now. I either got the right line or I got the right speed. It's just trying to get those two things together. that just driving me nuts. I think you're, I think a lot of people listening are like, that's what it's called. when you only get one of them, right? 50% putter. That's yeah. Put it. Yeah. Um, But good. I mean, yeah, I think you, it, you understand this, obviously, but golf being so fickle mentally, it's like oh, yeah. it's like yeah. the weirdest little change to your equipment, oh, yeah. or sure. maybe it's the tiniest little setup adjustment, whatever it is, and it goes well the first time. Now you're locked in. Now you have confidence. It's, it's strange. So, yeah, you're, you you talked about one half of the catch twenty two. Yeah, got to putt better to think better, but I got to think better to putt better. So, which of those comes first? We've got this stupid chicken and the egg thing going on here, and I just (laughs) don't know what's going on. Um, But I do have some events coming up. Uh, I'm pretty much off the month of July. Um, Just going to be working, and uh, which is good because I I do take a lot of time off. But um, in August, I've got the Pennsylvania Open, uh, which is at York Country Club in PA. Have not played York yet. It's a supposed to be a phenomenal golf course. Mm -hmm. Host U.S. Open qualifying every year i don't go there because it produces a really good strong field and the, those who know it i mean it's an old style golf course it's one of those where course knowledge really yeah. helps so I've, I've kind of avoided that um and then there's this new senior players uh, mm-hmm. tour event which is right at the end of the month in august and then i don't think i've got right now anything on on the schedule for september though senior players is doing one event per month so that's exceptionally there, there, appealing there to me. There might be another in September. Yeah, so. we'll, we'll see. We'll see how things go. And then uh, as long as I do the work I have to do, I'll be playing, trying to defend the, the Maryland senior in, in October. Nice. So and who knows? Uh, there might be a couple other things come up. Uh, and if they do, I'll you know, look into it. I'm sure. I'm always looking for things to play in. Okay. Well, but I do have to work sometimes. So yeah, I mean, yeah. it's it's been fun to track and always sort of following the live scoring and stuff during yeah. that. But um, you know, it's uh, when you when you play in two U.S. Senior Opens back to back, you know, it, you kind of draw some attention to your game and things are, you know. And I know this hasn't been the best year for you, but it's yeah, still fun to track it's, and, it's it's golf. Yeah. Right? I mean, what it would be ridiculous of me to think that oh, I'm just going to go down and just qualify for the Senior Open. A third time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, come on. I mean, I, I, I shot even par and, or well, I know, was shot it, 72 was it, anyway. Was it last the, year you had the ridiculous playoff. Oh yeah, kind of the crazy sequence to yeah. sneak in. So. I mean, just getting just getting into that one. I, mean, I had to make a 50 footer on the on the 18th hole to get into a playoff. That's right. You know? Yep, yep, yep. Uh, I, I'm trying to remember I actually exactly had, what I actually had dinner with the uh, the guy that I beat in the playoff uh, last year. This year, okay. And uh, okay, we, so we, we, we could, talked we yeah. talked a little bit about it <laughs> and. You know, he he was he was pretty heartbroken. You know, he, he was. I mean, yeah, how can you not be? Yeah, yeah. And I've I found I've found through time that I've become better at not being quite so empathetic with with other players. Right? There's having empathy is a, is a good quality. Yes, but in golf, it's it's still kind of cutthroat. Oh, right? Yeah. And we're we're all trying to get there right yep. we want we want to do we want to finish 
first. We mm -hmm. want to qualify. And so, I mean, when that 50-footer went in, besides being incredibly elated that I had just made this cross green putt and I was, you know, I had finally caught the guy. I the, also you, you knew, knew that, time, yeah, right? oh yeah, yeah. I didn't know what else was behind us or who what had finished in front yeah. of us, but I knew that this guy was playing good and if I was going to have any chance, I had to catch him. Mm -hmm. But I also went, you know, <laughs> my mind went, Man, that was cruel. Mm. <laughs> you know, yeah. it, it it is. It's it's. You think on the other side, will do if that. that happened to me, I'd and be. Crushed. He had to be prepared for that, right? That I've played enough match play and watched enough match play that if you are not prepared for what another golfer is going to do, yeah, y you will hurt yourself, right? Yeah. So I, I, I trust that he was not expecting me to make it, but but knew that it. it was there. Yeah. Um. And then you know the devastation beyond that is is totally understandable, it's out, it's out right? Of your, and it's mean, out of your control. Too. Yeah. And then you know we, we had a good playoff. We went four holes. Yeah. So um, he didn't he didn't lose the playoff. I made a birdie. Right. Yeah. He didn't make a mistake. So which is always better way. You know, it is way better, better right? That way. Yeah. So. Absolutely. Um, okay. So we have about 10 to 15 minutes here. We got a few questions. Yeah. Um, I found on YouTube from our comments and it's people, cool. I think they're in general asking our, our channel for some insight, right? Yeah. Uh, not necessarily directed at anyone in particular, but since yeah. we have Mr. Kevin Kraft here, we might as well. So this one's from um, A Lit, that might be saying that wrong, um, 7313 on YouTube. So okay. this, he said, this is going to sound silly, but can someone clarify, he's new to golf, um, the difference between driving irons slash utility irons and then just normal irons, um, are they not the same thing? So. Um, New new person to golf. Yeah, uh, I know. But we, it, on the basic level, the build is a little bit different. But talk to, talk yeah. to this person about that. It's they're different. Yeah, they're definitely different. Um, set irons tend to get considerably more challenging as the, as you get <laughs> as that number goes down. Yeah, you, yeah. That's why you don't see very many manufacturers making a whole lot of three irons anymore, right? Yeah. So the category where you do get to see three irons and two irons is in the in the utility or, or driving iron mm -hmm. category. They are geared to be a bit more forgiving, not necessarily all of them. Yeah. Um, we will see in upcoming videos some differences there. Yeah. Um, and there are definitely different levels of, of forgiveness across the across the spectrum, but they are designed to be uh, a little bit easier to hit and a little more confidence inspiring at setup than your your standard, you know, set long iron. Okay. Um, it's interesting too because the 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 long irons that are available tend to be more in the players category. Um, yeah. And you're right. that's good and bad. I look at it as good and bad. Most people shouldn't be playing a three iron. Right. I mean, it's oh, just yeah. it's just not. I don't want to have anything to do with a four iron. Yeah. I mean, it's it's just no. I don't I don't I don't want that. I'm not consistent enough uh, to hit a four iron the way I want to hit a shot, you know, all the time. So um, we do a lot more five iron on down, four irons for those who are kind of anti hybrid or mm -hmm. just feel like they really do better with with irons. I'm never gonna take, you know, takes a club out of somebody's hand if they feel like they're they're better with it. Yeah. Um, but driving irons do offer the folks that don't love hybrids a little more forgiving option. Um, I don't think their utility, even if they're called a utility, is quite as you know dynamic as a, as a maybe, hybrid. Maybe, yeah, you know, because I'm not going to try and hit a, a a two driving iron out of the rough. Yeah, right. Even on a just an okay lie in the rough. Driving iron probably is the more applicable name. Yeah, a lot of it really is. It will be off the tee a lot more often. Than, yeah, 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 for sure. Hybrid's going to give you that little more uh, playability out of a bunch more situations. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you don't have to have a really good lie to be able to hit it out of the fairway or yeah. just out of the rough. And you can gouge them even with a with a so-so lie in the rough. You can gouge it and make yeah. it go. Harder to do that with a utility club yeah. Or, yeah. or a driving iron. Utility sure. club. Yeah, utility club. Um, all right, Martin Ramirez, 1982, says, I'm a beginner golfer looking to buy my first set of clubs. I recently talked to my grandpa, and he offered me his set of ping irons and Callaway clubs from the 90s. 
I wondered whether a set of cheap modern clubs, uh, he does mention specifically a nitro set Good. at Walmart, um, or an old set of Callaways and Pings, the ones he's referring to from the 90s, would be better to start with. I mean, it's a little bit of a tough question. Yeah. Because some of the the lesser expensive box sets aren't great. Yeah. Um, but it allows people to get into the game. I don't... Yeah. Well, it gives you everything you need. It does. It does. And you get... Getting a full set with a modern sized head. Yeah. Probably a little more. Probably the maybe a little bit the better way to go. Um, that said, though, you know we sell a lot of stuff that's been around for a bunch of years, yeah, yeah. right? Um, and how often do we see Zing two sets and I two sets and you know that kind of thing going out the door? Um, <sighs> That, it really is a it tough. Is, it, it, is. It, it is a tough question. I will say, um, if this person is has not yet made that decision, um, and I don't know the price of this nitro set. He's yeah, that's, speaking that's, of, but yeah, the the Cobra Fly XL set seems like another so a great one. Yeah, that's that's something that we've got a lot of stock of yeah. now, and we sell a ton of them. And the nice thing is, it is it's it's backed by such a reputable brand. Yeah, you know, you go into a. You know, most companies have have some box sets. Mm -hmm. um, you go into that branded box set. Yes, you're going to pay a little bit more, but you're also going to get a good bit yeah. more out of it. The last longer. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So you get really good customer service. I have no idea what kind of customer service that box set would would have with it, right? right. But if something goes wrong with with a Cobra or a TaylorMade or a Callaway or. Um, Wilson or whatever they're gonna they're gonna take care of yeah. their, their their customers so um, if you want to get into the game get into the game mm -hmm. grab some clubs maybe start with you know just start swinging with with what's on offer at no cost right golf's expensive and then if you're you get really bit by the bug and we certainly hope you do get yeah, bit yeah, by the right. bug then you haven't spent anything to get into it then maybe your budget changes a little bit and maybe you do go into more of a branded box set you know, get that whole 14 piece kit with a bag and everything yep. and then you're you're just you're ready to go to the golf right. course um you know we we do a lot of the the box sets just to get people going right oh, yeah uh the fly z or fly xl box sets you know are that next next step up maybe somebody's not quite ready to drop the kind of, of dollars that are necessary to go piece by piece by piece these days um so you, but i mean you can get that whole set for almost i mean any iron set from the last couple of years is going to be yeah. more expensive just the irons than yes. that whole box set yeah so yeah um and they're good right and they're, they're good i think they're good yeah. right exactly so um, yeah, that's a long-winded answer for Martin, but I think, yeah. you know, that's because like you said, that initial question was a tough one, but my first thought was that Fly XL set is, like, perfect. I mean, there's also yeah. other box sets, but I know the, the combination of price and yeah. what is all included. Yep. It's a very good, yep. very sure good offer. Is. So, sure is. Um, here's one from BizLaw Professor, so probably somebody smarter than me, hmm. um, but asking, yeah. where does Second Swing recommend the transition happen in a combo set? Okay, so that's a good one. I mean, we, if... Uh, if you look in what's going on in my bag right now, I have two. I have two transitions. Mm -hmm. So I use a utility iron in the five iron. Okay, um, I wanted something that seemed a little bit more forgiving. My I know what my tendencies on my misses are. They tend to be a little thin. I seem to get a little more ball speed even off the little misses mm -hmm. off this. I get a little more trajectory, a little more spin. So those two, three things kind of work to keep the same distances that I have now though with a different way of getting there um, and then I'm playing six and seven in the in the CB cavity back and then eight on down in the in the blades um, it's a comfort level thing you know the the questions that we're gonna ask in this scenario all right where where do you feel like you've got the best control what's what is that iron that, that yeah. you still feel really good about and then where do things start to start to waver just a little bit right the confidence isn't quite as good 
that's really where you want to make that break, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're doing a if you're doing a combo set and you're just looking you're looking for something that's going to be just a little more forgiving, whether you're starting out in a you know in a game improvement set or whether you're starting out in blades, finding that spot where you just are like, okay, this is where things start to go a little squiffy. Right. That's the spot where you want to do that break. This is, you know, if you step yeah. up to a shot, I feel good about my chances of hitting yeah. the green with this club. Yeah. But if it was ten yards behind me and I had to pick the one club up, I would. My confidence goes down. Yeah, we see know. a lot of breaks at seven iron, mm -hmm. and so if we're doing combo sets, you know, we'll hit the primary, the you know, the more forgiving iron along with the more challenging iron, and then you've got data, right? So. Data is great because it doesn't lie. So yep. there's no there's there's no subjective anything about that. Um, you can see where the numbers are, and if you're creating, you know, one four two smash with a with with this iron, and we're looking at that at that break line, and you're at one, you know, one three two yeah. with with this one, maybe that break is one more club down. Yeah. Right. Right. Uh, just because there's such a, a huge difference there, mm -hmm. and we don't want to you don't want to get something that ultimately makes golf harder. Golf is hard enough in and of itself that we right. do not need to make our equipment make things more difficult. Yep. Yeah. Oh, I agree with that yeah. completely. Um, all right, last one I've got here from Jordan Jenkins five five eight zero. What is the most commonly overlooked or most, most or excuse me, I'm going to restart the whole thing here. <laughs> what is the most commonly overlooked or most important thing that can impact a golfer negatively in, in equipment? And then he puts in parentheses, lie angles, grip size, sole width. Is there any one aspect of the club fitting world that is maybe uh, most important or maybe might be overlooked the most? In, in decent club fitting, nothing should be overlooked. Yeah, <laughs> honestly, well, of course. Um, that's something that that you know. I or maybe something where you talk through it with the customer, yeah. and they're like, "Oh, I never thought of that." Yeah. Um, me personally, I think length is is yeah. something that really factors in there a lot. Um, I'm I'm a huge proponent of, especially for golfers that are that are newer and, and maybe don't have fully established golf swings, staying really close to what their static fit is so that their golf club is not biased one way or the other, right? So um, if you give a, somebody who's uh, wrist to floor length and, and hand length and their, their static measurements come out right at you know, standard or maybe even a little under standard, and you give them a longer golf club, right? They're going to have to make adjustments in their golf swing to be able to accommodate that golf club, right? So we don't want that. We don't want biasing your your golf swing one way or the other is going to create problems yeah. at some point. So the the length thing I think is is really really very important. I'm going to be listening to see whether we're getting solid contact or whether we're getting thin shots or whether we're getting a little bit of mat contact, right? When we do static, or when I do static, um, those who come in under length is, is a much more difficult assessment than somebody that comes in over length. Over length is really easy. You get somebody that comes in an inch over length uh, over their over static, then you, we, we go a half inch in, in length in the golf club. Mm -hmm. Unless there's there's always situations that, that dictate going away from that. Yeah. Static fitting is just based on measurements. The dynamic side of things is going to show us way more than than right than static. Um, but generally speaking, we're going to go you know half of whatever that measured length is in in length of golf club. Um, when it gets under length is when things get a little little weird because most people have found a way to swing a golf club that's maybe technically a little longer than what their yeah. their static measurement would be. Um, but we also, you know, I'm I'm going to look at golf swings to see what's going on there too. I mean, I'm fortunate that I've come through in a you know, as a, as an instructor, so. I look at <laughs> it's a blessing and a curse, man. I look at every I look at every golf swing from an analytical standpoint, and I look at everybody's golf bag from an analytical yeah, standpoint. Right, right. So no matter where I am, I'm just like Ooh, looking at looking at what's going on. Um, <laughs> so 
length that's a really long way around to get to the length is probably the one okay the one thing but it all matters you know lie angle matters uh um, well yeah, and i think it's also like there's there's a standard length for golf clubs and i think most people just gravitate and a lot of people do fit into the standard length statically right yeah um yeah. but if you're taller or shorter or or maybe you don't even notice but maybe your clubs that you have are half inch long half inch short and you don't even know it yet and that could be causing problems and making you swing away you maybe shouldn't be swinging yeah and all right so let's take let's let's put taylor made on spot right so the their game improvement clubs stock come a half inch longer than their p-series player stuff mm. so you get somebody that's average size maybe slightly longer arms or, or big hands right and they go and they buy a stock set off the rack they're playing a golf club that's probably a good bit longer than what they what they should be in right um so there's <laughs> there's there's all this stuff go see a fitter go see a fitter go because see a fitter fitter's, fitter's going to be able to tell it's going to be able to navigate these waters yeah uh and, second spring fitters won't miss any of those points that you were no absolutely you know, not absolutely yeah. not i mean and, the, and they all add up to things right this whole golf club thing is about trying to make sure that we have stuff that works properly and isn't holding you back and right. helps you helps you move forward you know it's 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 so important to get fit uh yeah it, 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 yeah well i can echo that um yeah. as someone who has been trying trying to get to scratch golf i'm close to getting there but i certainly wouldn't be where i am right now um without clubs that are fit for me so yeah uh, but kevin i think that'll wrap it up for for this so thank you cool. for coming in and hey thanks for having me again I, for i love coming up here yeah especially when, especially it's, nice when it's nice out yeah, yeah yeah so um stay tuned to the youtube channel for the videos that are coming soon um otherwise if you haven't yet um tell your friends tell your dad tell all your golfing partners about the second swing thoughts podcast and um we'll catch you guys next time yeah go get fit